Hello Guardians, Iso here. In this video, I wanted to take a look at one of the most important characters to the current season of Destiny, Lakshmi 2. Lakshmi is the director of the Future War Cult, one of the organizations that has members of the Consensus and represents the civilian interests, alongside Dead Orbit's Arak Jalal and New Monarchy's Executor Hideo. If you need a crash course of these three organizations, here you go. New Monarchy is a pro-city organization that wants to support law in order to bring about a new Golden Age. Dead Orbit, however, believes that the Earth is doomed, and they follow a grim, nihilistic code in which they desire to leave Earth behind and start a new civilization among the stars. The Future War Cult, however, uses stolen Vex technology to look into the future and see possible futures, which all end in war. As such, they plan to outfit Guardians with the best equipment they can muster so they can do battle against the darkness in the future. Lakshmi was little more than a side character, but during the events of the season of the Splicer, she's becoming an important centerpiece. When the House Light refugees were given quarter in the ruins of the Batsa district to assist with the Endless Night, Lakshmi made her way into the conversation. She greeted the Elixni refugees, but told them to keep to themselves and not to enter the city proper. Later, she had this to say to us in private. When I requisitioned this transmitter, I was told the helm would be a secure location. I suppose this will have to do. Greetings, Guardian. I'm Lakshmi II of the Future War Cult, and I'm here to offer my assistance, because you need it quite badly. The Future War Cult has long used Vex-derived technology to see into the future. I won't bore you with an explanation of mind-forking. Suffice to say, we understand its dangers and use the device responsibly. I have glimpsed our future, Guardian. And what I saw was chilling. Skies dark with smoke. Shouting. Gunfire. And in the center of it all, standing in our city, a group of fallen, the same fallen I saw earlier. Ikora listened to my report, but she chose not to hear it. The vanguard would rather protect its image than its people. And so I will handle things myself. We can change this future. Stop it from happening while I monitor your progress against the Vex and assist where I am able I will observe these fallen if they begin to act against us well when I foresaw the Red War they laughed until Gaul bound the traveler this time I will not whisper my warnings I will not be polite I look forward to working with you, Guardian. Together, we can protect our city from all who would wish it harm. Suffice to say, Lakshmi has conviction. After this, she started to spread hateful rhetoric around the last city, concerning what she called a hateful mob of fallen that the vanguard had let in without asking. She says that the Elixni will never change, and that they will always be nothing more than pirates, looters, and raiders. They will always be fallen. She says that Mithrax actually has no power to stop the Endless Night Curse. And worst of all, she spreads the word of the future she's seen from her device, the future in which there is conflict with the refugees. She says that if we don't change course, bloodshed will be inevitable. But what exactly did she see? The Future War Cult has always been secretive about their device, but we know a few details. When used, it spits out multiple futures that may or may not come to pass. We also know that Lakshmi 2 is the only operator of the device that has not been driven mad from its use. But if we look at the lore for the weapon Stochastic Variable, we can see the exact readout that the device gave to her. Lakshmi 2. Faction. Exo. Politician. 
One, the elixir recorder, screaming, a crackling portal, treachery, fallen attack, we're being overrun, where are the guardian? Two, the last city, the tower in ruins, fallen scavengers sift the rubble. Three, the last city, radioactive dust, dark growths in the ruins, where is the traveler? Mutated ghosts. Four. The elixir recorder. A crackling portal. Asher speaks. Fallen being attacked. Dead orbit overhead. Saint 14 besieged. FWC surrenders. Five. The elixir recorder. The endless night. A crackling portal. Mithrax firing wildly. The cult flees. Ikora triumphant. Six. The elixir recorder. A crackling portal. Snipers fire down. Blood runs in the gutter. An ether tank explodes. The endless night. Asher speaks. Those FWC traitors. Seven. The Batsa district. A crackling portal. Fallen flee. FWC banners. Zavala is gone. Mithrax on trial. Lakshmi 2 looks over the crowd. Lakshmi 2. Head of state. Exo. Prophet. Savior. This lore tab might be slightly confusing. First, the device gives preliminary information on the user. Then, it lists seven timeline possibilities, and then it provides changed information regarding the status of the user based on how the timeline has affected them. Lakshmi 2 goes from faction head exo politician all the way to Lakshmi 2 head of state, exo prophet savior. Now we see her true game. Indeed, to the average observer, we see Lakshmi as the main aggressor of the Elixini refugees for nothing more than hate. With a little more context, we can at least understand that she's doing what she believes is necessary to save her people and her city. But now, with all the cards on the table, we can see what this is really about. Greed. Personal gain. Power. However, not all is well for the future war cult. Her rather extreme view on the Elixini refugee situation is causing quite a lot of division in their ranks. The following lore from the weapon The Vision shows a letter from Navarro, a member of the FWC, to Lakshmi 2. Director Lakshmi 2, enough is enough. I know what you're using, and I'll be speaking with the Vanguard. The fact that you think you can interpret what has driven dozens to insanity doesn't give me a good deal of confidence in your decision-making abilities, and I can't keep my concerns internal any longer. We don't need another Sundaresh in the upper ranks. I don't care if you saw the Red War before it happened. What would you say of the several other unfruitful predictions you conveniently ignore now? I have listened to your speeches and read your many messages calling for support. I understand you believe the future is at stake and we are supposed to be doing something about that. Fear over the Fallen is not the future this organization was meant to combat. Your paranoia won't change my mind. My children were harassed in the streets today for daring to bring food to the Elixir Quarter. They came home in tears and I wonder how long until it becomes worse. I won't be a part of spreading that fear. I won't participate in splitting this city and turning it against itself. I'm well aware of the dangers posed by fallen houses, but the city remains strong because we stand together. You're a student of history. You know how the Iron Lords converted warlords into dutiful servants of the light. Lord Shax alone should speak to the value of that effort. If a fallen house wants to stand with us against their own, just like the warlords of old, just like the fallen in the reef did, who are you to tell them no? Armies we can keep out. The Guardians will hold the wall. That danger is nowhere close to the death from within that you are stoking. If it all falls apart, just remember Mithrax didn't fire the first shot. You did. Consider this my resignation. Navarro. Lakshmi is bleeding members. Though she's able to successfully rile up hate mobs out of the civilian population, she must look to others for support when it comes to her long game. The following comes from the Beneath the Endless Night lore book, Chapter 4, Conspirators. 
Arak Jalal narrowed his eyes with impatience as Dead Orbit's head of logistics struggled to satisfactorily account for the faction's supply caches. The pair had been wandering around the massive hangar for an hour, while an enormous ship was being loaded in the background. Jalal had seen the celestial disappearances and the encroachment of the Black Fleet as clear signs that Dead Orbit's final exodus must soon begin. He had ordered a redoubling of departure preparations, but found the faction's rank and file struggling to keep pace. Jalal cut off his subordinate's bumbling presentation. This is insufficient. Earth will soon be behind us, and Dead Orbit will have to survive on the supplies that we provide. His mild tone and half lettled gaze underscored the gravity of his words. Supplies that you are in charge of tracking. You do understand that, don't you? A furious blush spread across the administrator's face. He bowed his head and scuttled away as Jalal crooked his head in annoyance. Behind him, a raspy voice floated up from the maze of tower and crates. Leaving us so soon, Jalal. He turned to find Lakshmi II and Executor Hideo. The future war cult leader stood formally, hands clasped before her, while the head of New Monarchy browsed the shipping crates with casual interest. This is an impressive collection. I had no idea Dead Orbit was so well funded. Hideo gestured broadly to the crates. Jalal shrugged. It's a life's work, Hideo. Everything we'll need to reseed the human species elsewhere. You should join us. We're fine where we are, thank you, Lakshmi interjected. As a matter of fact, that's why we've come. Jalal bowed his head and gestured towards the hangar exit. The trio ambled outside. Hideo and I are concerned about the current vanguard leadership, Lakshmi began carefully. Jalal allowed himself a mirthless chuckle. Yes, I've heard your open editorials. You are becoming quite the demagogue. I never knew you held such a strong feeling about the Fallen. If it's incitement to speak the truth, then so be it, Lakshmi fired back, sharper than intended. The Fallen have been a useful catalyst, but that doesn't mean we're wrong. Perhaps not about the Vanguard, Jalal replied, but the cult is hemorrhaging members, and I doubt it's your best and brightest remaining. Those who wish to leave are free to do so, Lakshmi said with a pointed glance toward the Dead Orbit ship. We'll be stronger without them. Zavala and Ikora have been ineffective since the Speaker died, Executor Hideo cut in. The disappearance of the planets caught them unprepared. They're allowing Guardians to use the darkness, and now they've cut a deal with the Cabal? It's just too much. We must have leadership whose point of view is more closely aligned to that to people, Lakshmi said. And who do you propose exactly? Jalal stopped the trio at the corner of a broad thoroughfare, where the rumble of cargo movers masked their conversation. Saladin was our first choice, Hideo added with an ill-concealed smirk. But he's not as cutthroat as he seems. Appears the Iron Lord has a soft spot for Commander Zavala. Lakshmi gave Hideo a look, as though he'd revealed too much. We're now considering Saint-14, she said, pointedly bringing the conversation back to the present. Jalal raised an eyebrow. Who else is committed to your little coup? We have someone in a position of influence. Someone who can ensure an orderly transfer of power, Lakshmi answered. That person would have to be very clever indeed, Jalal said gravely. For your sake. Our core array is not a target to miss. The moment stretched as Jalal measured the situation. He'd long considered what a change of leadership might mean for Dead Orbit, for the resettlement and survival of the human species. And as always, the allure of personal power, a position of eminence in a dying society, was a constant temptation. This is a major bombshell. Lakshmi is planning a coup to overthrow the consensus and establish a new form of government, one in which she will place Lord Saladin, or Saint-14, as the head of, before controlling them like a political puppet. The consensus is the current ruling body of the last city, which acts as a form of republic, 
in which representatives at the consensus vote on topics and have their voices heard. However, there's been a pretty serious power imbalance as of late. The de facto leader of the city was the speaker, but following his death during the Red War, there's no official head of the consensus. Barak Jalal of Dead Orbit, Lakshmi II of the Future War Cult, and Executor Hideo of New Monarchy all have seats. The three Guardian Vanguards also have seats, but seeing as how Cade VI was killed and never replaced, that leaves only Commander Zavala and Ikora Ray to represent the Guardians. It's also implied that Hawthorne may have a seat at the Consensus, representing more foreign interests among those that live outside the city's walls, but clearly there's a large vacuum of power one that Lakshmi wishes to take advantage of. It seems as if they planned to include Lord Saladin as their figurehead, but, after he refused, they moved on to their second choice. The following comes from the Beneath the Endless Night lore book, Chapter 8, Gilded Knives. They say the promenade of the core district never sleeps. In times of celebration, it was a parade ground meant to extol the virtues of the Guardians and show the people of the city the faces of their often distant defenders. To see it empty was almost unheard of since the Red War. Executor Hideo of New Monarchy walked alongside Lakshmi II of Future War Cult. Observing vendor stalls decorated in neon lights that flickered intermittently as they passed. But there were no vendors. No proprietors. Hideo glanced over his shoulder at the four future war cult security officers that followed behind them at a respectful distance. Do you remember the last time this street was empty? He asked. Yes, Lakshmi said with a heavy heart. They called me a fool then as well. She did nothing to hide the contempt in her voice. We make mistakes in circles, Hideo, walking in a loop of our own self-made despair. Before he could formulate a response, Hideo spotted the reason for their walk through the endless night. A towering behemoth of chrome and lavender cloth, hunched over in an abandoned plaza. Saint-14 focused on the birds underfoot, scattering a handmade mix of seeds on the ground while he cooed contentedly at the pigeons. You have chosen poor night for walk, he observed as Hideo and Lakshmi approached. Do you need an escort back to tower? Hideo shook his head. No, Saint. We went to find you in the hangar, and Miss Holiday informed us that you would come here to... He eyed the birds. Contemplate. Birds are uncomplicated. Good conversationalists. They give me room to think, Saint said with a smile in his voice. How can I help? The consensus has struggled, as of late, with some of the Vanguard's decisions regarding the city's security. We wanted to expand that conversation to include you, Lakshmi said. But not Iraq Jalal, Saint asked, a more pointed and cunning response than either Hideo or Lakshmi anticipated. No, Hideo quickly confirmed. Lakshmi verbally maneuvered around Hideo's answer like water around a stone. This is about ensuring that the best interests of the city are at the forefront of the Vanguard's mind. Saint fixed his helmeted visage on Lakshmi. The Elixni. A statement, not a question. The Vanguard are a military force, and the consensus does not doubt their commitment to defending the city beyond its borders. Lakshmi carefully worded her approach. But... We have come to doubt that a military force is the best governance for the city inside of its walls. Saint squared his shoulders as if presented a challenge, and looked between Hideo and Lakshmi. His stoicism twisted Hideo's stomach into knots. We would like to propose a restructuring of the city's leadership. Placing the vanguard as the authority for what goes on outside the walls, Hideo gestured towards the mountains and respective leadership here inside the city, he motioned to Saint. This is bad plan, Saint said without any attempt at obfuscating his feelings. Surely you understand that tactical options in the field do not always apply unilaterally in a civilian quarter, Hideo pleaded. On top of that, the vanguard is stretched too thin. They cannot be the leadership they need to be. Saint balked. Then why come to me? I am no politician. 
But you are a leader. Lakshmi countered as she placed a hand over her chest. A hero. A symbol to the people. Saint drew in a steady breath and grew silent. It may not feel like the right choice because of your personal feelings towards Commander Zavala and Ikora. Change can sometimes feel distasteful, but I know you aren't one to ignore your sense of duty. Saint looked down at his feet, at the birds, at the seed. I must speak with Osiris, he asserted. Lakshmi briefly regarded Hideo and nodded. Give your partner our regards. I will, Saint said stiffly, scattering the last of the seed in his hands to the birds before departing the plaza. Hideo and Lakshmi waited under the watchful eye of the Traveler until Saint was gone. If he tells Zavala or Ikora, Hideo said through clenched teeth. Osiris will stop him from doing anything so stupid, Lakshmi said, the softness in her voice gone. And if he is so short-sighted as to refuse us as Saladin did. Hideo's stomach twisted again. It's unclear where exactly Lakshmi 2's story will go in the coming days, but only time will tell. So thank you for joining me today. My statistics tell me that about 40% of you watching right now aren't subscribed yet, so please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. The best way to let me know you enjoy my content is to leave a like on the video or a comment down below. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.